I, I mentioned storage quite a bit, and and when we design storage, we have some you know some quick estimates on how many virtual desktops can we support on a single spindle or a single disk. And this really came about. We had to figure this out to figure out how many users would be able to get on a hypervisor server for virtual desktops, and that would then help us determine how much RAM do we need to buy for these particular hypervisor servers as well, because we don't want to waste it. So some quick estimates we were able to able to find out from different tests that have been done, um, you know, Citrix tests as well as uh, third-party tests that have been done, is that we know that on a single disk we can have five simultaneous boot ups of a virtual desktop. We can have 12 simultaneous logons. 14 simultaneous log offs, and depending on the workload, we can have anywhere from 7 to 18 simultaneous users per spindle. So that's just some really quick estimates of what you can get on uh, a particular disk. Now, if we go a little bit deeper, you can figure out that all these calculations, it all comes down to IOPS, the, 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 the input and output operations that we have per second. This is influenced by the disk speed. How fast the disks are? The, fast, the more IOPS you're going to get. So for a 15,000 RPM disk, you're going to have a lot more IOPS. If you have a slower disk, fewer IOPS. You know, it's not rocket science there. Um, faster is better. Uh, the RAID level, um, you know, what type of redundancy are we going to have within our, within our, our storage design? Uh, there is a write penalty when you do different RAID levels. And you can see with RAID 0, there, the penalty is 1, so there really is no penalty. RAID 1 or RAID 10, there's a 2. It's a you know, it's a two penalty, you lose half of your, your write capacity of IOPS, and the RAID 5 you lose, RAID 5 being based on four disks, uh, you would lose uh, about 75% of your write capacity. We also have to figure out read and write percentage, you know, so based on tests and observations that we've seen, it's about 20 to 80. So 80% 80 of our virtual desktops will be doing writes. And then again, you have to look at the activity. Um, how many IOPS do each of these things generate? So starting up a virtual desktop is about 26 IOPS. Logging on, logging off, and, and just working on the desktop has different levels of activity. In the working, you see the range is anywhere from 8 to about 20. And it's all dependent on how active the users are within their virtual desktop. So we try to figure out, the next thing we try to do is figure out how many IOPS do we, told, do we have in the environment. And you know, since since this is about a school, let's let's do some math. So to get the total raw IOPS of the environment, we have to figure out what's the disk speed IOPS. So we know that we have 15,000 RPM drives. That is going to give us 150 IOPS per spindle, times the number of disks that we have, which is eight, and that will give us a total raw IOPS of 1,200. Now that's not the total functional IOPS because we are doing RAID. So now we go into this next formula, and we have total raw IOPS times the write percentage, which we know is going to be 80%. And we divide that by the RAID penalty. And we're going to be doing RAID 10 on this, and we know the RAID penalty is 2. We're going to add this up to be, you know, we're, we're going to figure this out, and we're also going to add it to the, for the, the other side of the equation, the, uh, the read percentage. So again, we have 1,200 raw IOPS times the read percentage, which is 20%. And if you get the calculators out, you're going to see that that is 720 IOPS. These are the functional IOPS. This is what those eight spindles in those, each of those hypervisors is capable of based on the speed, based on the rate configuration. So that's all. You know, that's, that's the start. And what we now need to figure out is how many, how does this equate to figuring out how many people we can get on the desktop? Uh, on, on a hypervisor server. So we, we break this down into the, the different, the different uh, people who will be having virtual desktops. So we have middle school users, high school users, teachers, uh, school administrators, and support staff. Um, based on what we've seen and you know, how hard these people are working on their environment, we can see that in a working mode, when people are actually physically working on their desktops and their applications, uh, middle school users are using about eight IOPS kind of on the low end of our range. We get into high school because they're using more applications, they're up to about 14. Teachers, because they're pretty much working in the same applications as the high school students, they're at about 14 IOPS as well. Um, school administrators are using different applications, but they're not doing anything that's you know, very CPU intensive, you know, very intensive on the system. They're mostly working in office type productivity documents. And then we get into the support staff, their IOPS actually increased to 20 because they're using lots of different types of management tools that have much more of an impact on the storage. 
So we then break this down into figuring out about 20% of our users are middle school, 43% are high school, 24% uh, are teachers, 12% uh, are admi school administrators, and then 2% are support staff. So if we, you know, we calculate all this out, and we get an average IOPS of 13. So we bring all this down and try to figure out the average. And we know from the previous slide, when we figured out the total functional IOPS is, is 720, we're going to go ahead and divide that by our average of being 13. And we know that we're going to be able to get about 55 CCUs, 55 concurrent virtual desktops on each of our hypervisor servers. Now, again, we're in the design phase. This is part of, our, of what we are designing for. Now, when we actually go ahead and implement this stuff, we, we, we try to figure out you know, we're going to get more real-world examples of figuring out, okay, how close were we here? How do we have to adjust the design? Do we need more servers or fewer servers? So when we start piloting out this out into our, our user environments, into our schools, we can then drill those numbers in a little bit tighter. But that, that, is, that is how we, that's one of the steps we go into try to figuring out how we scale and design.